From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. We've got a significant uptick in heat that's coming just in time for the weekend. We'll walk you through who's got the excessive heat warning for both Saturday and Sunday. Forecasts on that's coming right up. Well, the excessive heat warning won't be here along the coast in Pacifica. I'm Justin Andrews because a lot of people will be here to cool down. I have a live interview with a surfer coming up. There's an existential threat to, you know, the industry that needs to be addressed. Hollywood halted as actors go on strike, but the Screen Actors Guild is demanding from studios and how this will impact how we watch TV and our movies, Sean. And Amanda, we are also following the story of a bus of migrants from Texas that arrived here in California, how the heat extended their journey by several hours before they got here. Uh, but first, we want to start off with letting commuters and anyone getting out the door early this morning. You plan on taking 92 with an update here. That stretch of Highway 92 in San Mateo is back open. This after a hazardous material spill shut down most of it on Thursday. About 40 gallons of sodium bisulfite spilled into the eastbound lanes. This was just west of 101. It actually came from a crack in a San Francisco PUC truck. The chemical is used for water treatment and can cause eye and skin irritation. It is also mildly corrosive. So if you drove through that area before the shutdown, you should probably think about washing your car as soon as you can. But again, all lanes are open on at 92, which makes that commute a lot easier for people this morning. We're really not seeing a lot of brake lights in that area right now. In fact, here is a live look at the San Mateo Bridge. If you are headed in that direction, westbound over towards 101 or continuing from that point, maybe to 280, moving along with some okay conditions right now. No major issues there. I want to show you a live look at 880. Looks great right now. Might be a little bit busier later on as the A's are in town. They'll be playing at the Coliseum tonight. But earlier we had a big problem on the Nimitz. Everything is now open and moving along nicely. Amanda. Let's take a live look outside for you on this Friday morning. The sun is just coming up right here. That looks so beautiful. And that sunrise above the clouds. So the heat wave is on its way and we want to make sure you stay safe. So the heat is already building in parts of the Bay Area. Visitors at the Happy Hollow Zoo in San Jose out enjoying the sunshine yesterday afternoon. The zoo is getting ready too. It was a little too warm for all the animals though. Just take a look at this. How cute is this? The capybaras, is that how you say that? Capybaras? Capybaras, taking a dip to cool off there. All right, so let's get a check of what we can expect for this weekend. Darren, how's it looking? It looks like it's going to be hot this weekend. <laughs> it's going to be really hot. So we're going to get straight into that headline. First thing I want to do is show you how right now, Friday morning, is anything but giving you the idea there's a heat wave coming. It's no sky July. We're all waking up to the gray sky and the marine layer that's out there. And the number in San Francisco right now, 55 degrees? That number is pretty much being experienced Bay Area wide. So you're going to step out the door on Friday and you're not really going to be thinking, perhaps, by your experience now, that there is a significant warm up coming tomorrow. San Jose, you're included in the excessive heat warning, but you're not going to be too over the top. I want to spotlight your numbers going into the weekend first, because we do have you go into the mid 90s. So you should be in the low 80s this time of year. 81 would be the average daytime high. So when you go to 93 in San Jose, that's pretty far above average, but it's not like you're going to be doing the extreme numbers we're going to be doing for the Inland Valleys. By the way, look where you're going to be by next week. Here's the best part about this. This is a short-lived spike in temperatures. We got to get through Saturday and Sunday. It's a bit unfortunate that it's coming on those two days, but just know once we get into early next week, things are really going to improve. We'll take a look at how this will play out for those warmest inland valleys first in the seven-day forecast, and here's our headline. We're looking across inland Contra Costa County. That's Concord down there. These are the two days right here that really stand out the most. We've got two first alert days that does say 106 on there. For Saturday, we're going to go into more detail on this. I'll show you who has the excessive heat warning and all the rest of it in the complete first alert forecast in a bit. For now, let's get over to Gianna and hear about that drive. Nope, Amanda, it's your turn. Yeah, I'm going to take it from here, Darren. Thanks. So, as Darren just said, with those first alert weather days expected Saturday and Sunday, we know people are going to be heading along the coast to beat that heat. Excessive heat warnings are issued inland this weekend. So, Pacifica. They're going to be packed with people just wanting to cool off. Justin Andrews, live in Pacifica this morning. And Justin, I know a lot of people from Pacifica are Gianna Franco. Know what kind of weekend this is going to be. A lot of people <laughs> heading to their neighborhood. Absolutely, because it's going to be so much cooler here in Pacifica and pretty much anywhere along the coast. 
But if you go inland, yeah, it's going to be 90s, even the 100 degree temperature. So a lot of people will be flocking to Pacifica to stay cool. And maybe they'll be wanting to catch some waves, including you, Amanda. You said you might be coming. So this morning, I have Todd Johnson joining us this morning. You're with the Surf Camp Pacifica. I want you to walk us through. You're also an instructor. Walk us through. First of all, we know so many people will be here. Let's talk about safety on the water, though, this weekend. Absolutely, Justin. Uh, yeah, so safety is uh, obviously a, our major focus here, uh, ocean safety and uh, etiquette out in the water. Um, everybody wants to come out and, and have fun. It does get very crowded. Um, as long as people, you know, practice good ocean etiquette and safety, uh, we always recommend that they take a lesson um, before just renting boards. Uh, there's many local uh Businesses, uh, NorCal Surf Shop, Sunlight Surf Shop, us, a couple other surf schools that offer beginner lessons and even intermediate lessons. And it just really helps to get out there to know what's going on before you, yeah. before you just jump out there in the water. Todd, when is a good time to come? It's what, 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm seeing some people already out there in the water. You know, it's going to be packed. Is there ever a good time that people can come out and say, hey, this is a pretty good time where I can kind of ease in and not have to worry about everything? Or will it be packed because a lot of people will be here trying to cool down? Uh, this is, you know, a very popular beginner beach. Yeah. Uh, people get here before first light. You'll see them changing into their wetsuits. Um, it's a great spot just because of the gradual slope of the beach into the ocean. Uh, the northern beaches obviously get a lot steeper yeah. and are deeper, a little more dangerous, a little more current. Uh, this is a great spot, so, but it does get crowded very early. Okay, so pack your patience. Absolutely. All right. Always. Yeah. Thank you so much, Todd, for talking to us about that and safety. And keep in mind, this is going to be a great place to be. It's going to be a lot cooler than where you live, Amanda. Back over to you. I know. No one's going to be visiting me this weekend for sure. All right, Justin, <laughs> thanks so much. It looks beautiful out there right now. Yeah. So for continuing coverage of the weekend heat wave, we're going to keep you updated at KPIX.com and streaming on the CBS News app. Let's get to our top stories now. For the first time in 60 years, Hollywood actors and screenwriters have both officially gone on strike. The Actors Union, SAG-AFTRA, formally announced a strike yesterday after negotiations with movie studios collapsed. At the center of the dispute is streaming revenue and the growing use of AI. The walkout will shut down many TV and film productions across the U.S. SAG-AFTRA represents more than 160,000 performers. Streaming and AI and digital is so prevalent in the industry, it has disemboweled the industry that we once knew. We're talking about the potential for them to be able to use our name, our likeness, our movements, our voice for future projects without our consent. While this strike lasts, actors cannot appear in films or even promote movies they've already made. They will join the picket lines this morning in front of some of Hollywood's largest studios. We have a live report on the strike in our next half hour. Sean. Amanda, now to a developing story. A Texas town has sent a bus of migrants to our state. The long ride became even more of a journey for them because of the hot weather. This is the third group to arrive from Texas, pulling up in L.A. on Thursday. On this bus, 30 people, including six children from Haiti, Venezuela, and Mexico. LAPD officers escorted the asylum seekers to a church in the city's Chinatown. Family members of some migrants already in California say their loved ones fled home after experiencing extreme violence from Mexico. Their journey began with a bus to the border in Brownsville. There they filed for asylum status and were granted a bus ride to L.A. We're feeding them where we have clothes, we have toys for the kids, we have a safe space where they can at least breathe and feel that they're safe and communicate with their families. The 30-hour ride had to be extended by another 10 hours because the bus was overheating and had to slow down. The city of Brownsville notified the mayor's office in L.A. about the transport on Wednesday. The church and nonprofits worked together to create a plan for this group. Now that they've arrived in California, migrants will get health screenings and legal support for their immigration cases.